this is the Casio G-Shock GA2100, often referred to as the Casio Oak or the Casio Oak because of the watch's head shape, which is reminiscent of the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. And it's a watch that made a whole lot of people go a little bit crazy when it was originally released. Now that the dust has settled and the hype has died down a little bit, I decided that it was time to see one for myself and to see if it is the best G-Shock of all time or if my beloved G-Shock Square DW5600 is still the top contender for Casio's King of the G-Shock. And while the hype has died down a little bit, meaning that you can actually go online and order one of these watches, the truth is that they're still wildly popular. And I don't think that that popularity was actually all hype. This is actually a great G-Shock in a lot of ways. It has all of the standard hallmarks of a Casio G-Shock when it comes to reliability, durability, quality, and construction. It has 200 meters of water resistance. It offers the same outstanding shock resistance that you'd expect from a G-Shock. It has a mix of carbon core and resin construction, and the movement has a three-year battery life at plus or minus 15 seconds per month in a range of accuracy. And it has a whole host of features, including world time, one one-hundredth of a second stopwatch, countdown timer, multiple alarms, and a fully automatic automatic calendar to the year 2099 with a day of the week indicator subdial on the left side of the watch face. So what this is really going to boil down to is this. Do you like the design and the style and the size of this watch? And for the most part that I have to say that yes, I do like all of these things, but not quite as much as I like my tried and true DW5600 G-Shock Square. What can I say? There's just something about this watch that speaks to me. It's probably a combination of the fully digital display, the 1980s Casio design language, and that classic square form factor. I just love the whole package of the DW. W5600, and that it comes in a hair smaller than the Casio Oak GA2100 doesn't hurt my feelings either. That said, what are the dimensions of the GA2100? Well, it's not a huge watch, and it works fine for me on my 6.5 inch wrist, but keep in mind that it does wear a bit larger than the Square G-Shocks, so if you prefer a slightly more understated wrist presence, perhaps consider the Square. But the dimensions do come in at 45.4 millimeters across the diameter of the case with a lug-to-lug -lug length that I would put at a around 48 to 48 and a half millimeters depending on where you're measuring from and the watch has an overall thickness of about 11.8 millimeters which I have to say is not bad at all. As a point of comparison, the G-Shock Square is a little bit smaller at 43.8 millimeters in diameter and about 47.5 millimeters lug to lug, but it does have a thickness of about 12.5. Now, as far as negatives go, I do have some negatives with this watch. And one thing about Casio G-Shocks in general, G-Shocks usually use a mineral glass crystal, which I have to say can scratch up pretty easily. But mineral glass is less prone to shattering than something like sapphire crystals, so for durability's sake, it's probably a fair trade. Off. Yes, you might get more scratches over time, but it's not going to break into a million pieces. And I have to say that this is a minor complaint that I have with G-Shocks on a whole. Generally speaking, it's not that big of a deal. Now, as far as the GA2100 Casio Oak goes, it does have a few negatives of its own, at least things that I find less than ideal, and of course, you may disagree with these findings. First, as you have probably noticed, this watch has a small digital display in the lower right side of the watch face. And I have to say it's kind of cool. It displays all sorts of information, including your stopwatch and your timer functions. But when you're in the main display mode, it can show you either the time in a digital format or you can click the lower left button and it can show you the date. Both useful functions, especially having the date prominent on the face of the watch. The problem is that the screen is a little bit hard to read, both because it's small and because it's a negative display. You'll notice on the G-Shock Square that the screen has a background that is light in color and the info on the screen is dark. This makes it really good and legible, even in somewhat dimly lit rooms. The negative display on the Casio Oak, however, it's hard to read in all but the most well-lit environments. Now, of course, G-Shocks have a light function, and you could push the little button to illuminate the watch face, and you can easily read the digital display when the light is on. But that comes at a cost, which is battery life. And I want to use the light as little as possible to save my battery, so keep that in mind. Now, being as this is a hybrid analog and digital display, you would expect that the analog areas of the watch to have glow-in-the-dark luminescence. And while the handset does have lume and it does glow in the dark, the hour markers don't. Now, it's not a big deal, honestly, but having a bit of lume on the hour markers would have been a nice touch. 
Finally, if I want to be really, really nitpicky and try to come up with one more complaint, it would be nice if the watch had some advanced features like solar recharging or maybe Bluetooth connectivity with a companion phone app for keeping the time synced or even just radio time sync. That said, I'm sure all of these features would increase the price of the watch and I'm certainly fine without them, but in an effort to be as critical as possible, why not ask for more technology built in? As far as a quick overview of the functionality of this 5611 module that runs this watch, as previously mentioned, it does have a bunch of features. First, let's look at setting the clock. If you hold the adjust button down for a few moments, the watch will beep and the handset will move out of the way of the small display. From here, we can step through all of the clock settings, which include the time zone, the daylight savings time setting, the time and the date itself, and so on. And once you're finished, you just click that adjust button again, and it goes back to the normal timekeeping mode. Now, by clicking the mode button, we can step through all of the watch's functions, including the world time display, if you want to see other time zones, and of course, the stopwatch function, which is, like I previously mentioned, accurate up to one one hundredth of a second, and honestly, my favorite feature of a G-Shock. Then, of course, you have the countdown timer, and finally, you have your alarm settings. Now, as previously mentioned, like I said, when you are on the main time screen, pushing that button on the lower right toggles the digital display between the current time and the current date. In either case, the bottom half of that display always shows the current seconds counter. Now on the wrist, and again, my wrist is 6.5 inches, it's really not bad. It's lightweight, it's comfortable, it's relatively thin, but it is just a hair bigger than I might prefer. But still, it's very wearable, all things considered. And it's only really large from my perspective because I have a relatively small 6.5 inch wrist. And while I do appreciate that the watch is a fair bit thinner than my trusty DW5600 Square, I have to be honest and say that overall I do prefer the way that the classic Square G-Shock wears a little bit more. It's just something about it that, I don't know, makes me smile when I look down at it and it just feels better on the wrist to me. It just gives me a little something that the Casio Oak doesn't have. Now, does that mean that I don't like the GA2100? No, of course not. I think that it's an outstanding watch, and I'm not surprised at all by the immense popularity of this model. I get why everyone loves it so much. I get why it's sold so well, and it has been so hard to order one. It's extremely cool. It's very modern, and it exemplifies what it means to be a Casio G-Shock. I would absolutely recommend it to anyone considering adding a new G-Shock to their watch collection. But keep this in mind. At about half the price, don't forget about the Casio DW5600 Square either. It's a classic for a reason. It's still my all-time favorite Hall of Fame G-Shock without any doubts. And honestly, if you're going to have one of these, maybe you should just have both.